What's up YouTube, it's Boss Steven here coming at you with another Dragon Ball CCG deck profile. And for those of you who are part of the Facebook community, you know exactly what is coming. This is the first version of the Gohan Heal deck that I've created. Now already in my mind I am working on different versions of this deck, but I want you guys to follow me on this journey, how the deck evolves, how the deck becomes its final version. So I'm going to give you the first version that kind of uh, brewed in my mind for the past couple of um, weeks. Uh, and it's not exactly 100% Gohan deck. Uh, we are trying to utilize the two card combination of cross arm dive with ascending to a new level, uh, which basically allows us to uh, put a uh, higher turn cost character with the same name that we already have in play into game basically yet again breaking the turn cost the turn system of the game now if you have watched my previous videos which i hope you did and if you haven't then of course you can uh, just do that by scrolling through the playlist of the dragon ball uh, uh, ccg deck reviews that i have on my channel um, and you will see that most of my competitive decks that i post here are all about breaking the turn cost system some ways. So that's what we're going to do in this deck as well. And as I said, it's not a 100% Gohan deck. Uh, and the reason being for that is basically because we are trying to maximize being able to uh, put into play uh, very high turn cost uh, warriors with the same name. So let's jump into it and I'll talk you through it and I'll see, you'll see where we are and what I'm talking about here. Okay, so of course we have uh, Piccolo uh, as our mat. It only suits a Gohan deck, which is not 100% Gohan. So uh, we start with the Warriors. Turn zero, we have our usual reliable turn zero Goku. He's a, he's a, he's a must have if you're running super uh, but even, you know, splashable into most builds. Goku's going to have a very important job in this deck uh, because we are going to use him to drop a turn 6 Goku with him. We have two Krillin, primarily in here for his support value and for the fact that we can uh, basically loot with him. Uh, we can discard a card and draw a card at the end of our turn. And he's also got backup, which can be useful in, in certain scenarios. I'm trying to do it like this. All right. And then we have two old Kai's. Old Kai's, uh, it really is a bad card of mine. I really like old Kai. The, just the fact that he's able to recycle a card every turn back into your deck from your discard pile. It can protect you from being uh, fierced out early. Uh, it can also... Uh, you know, get cards back for you if you're running Krillin. We're also running Dr. Willow here, so it's a good little out of, you know, if you have to discard too many cards from your hand. Uh, now, we do run the turn one Gohan, and if you haven't checked it out yet, well, please make sure you check out my, uh, my uh, Gohan uh, card reviews. You will know that, in my opinion, he's definitely one of the better Gohans because, well, first he comes down early and if he gets injured he gets fierce too besides becoming a 4-1 which is very much a beat stick for turn one but the fierce two is really really good as well again gohan is really needed in the deck so we can drop another turn six uh gray saiyan man and you're starting to see the theme here uh hopefully with the turn sixes we got two uh uh turn two goten and we have two turn two trunks and Trunks is the final warrior that we are going to be using to drop another turn six Trunks. Uh, also, what's probably worth mentioning is, of course, if you have Goten and Trunks, you can fuse into Gotenks. Uh, you can also, they can both search each other out, and they, uh, if they're in the same team, they buff each other out as well. But Goten's uh, especially important in this deck because we haven't got a lot of support. 
Uh, it allows us to search for the little trunks, but it also allows us to search for the turn six trunks and put it on the top of our deck, which is important to remember. And if he's in the same team with that turn six trunks, he still gets the plus one, plus one. So in effect, it becomes a three support value, which is very important. And they also have backup, which again is just an added little nice benefit. It allows you to have better access to your cards. You can charge them into Chi and then later pick them up if you need them. That's all really good stuff. Now we have two Dr. Relos, uh, yet again splashed into another deck, but the fact that he generates Chi and a card draw as well, not card advantage, you have to discard a card of course, so it's, it's not card advantage, but it helps you to churn through your deck a little bit, get to the cards that you need. And I was hesitant, I was thinking to put the turn 3 Hercule in here, so uh, partly so we can fuse into Gokyo, and also we can pick him uh, up and put maybe another warrior into play. But I realized that Boo is a lot better because we have to uh, we have to have a warrior that is very very high on uh, support value, which he is. Yet again, he has uh, backup. I'm telling you guys, set five was just absolutely amazing. These cards are pretty much like the the, the Goten, the Trunks, Wheelo, Boo. They're all set five best set ever made, really. Um, so, uh, you know, we can uh, basically move him to the discard area and we can prevent any damage to our warriors this turn. And we can do this in the action phase um, so we can really save our warriors because we don't have a lot of protection for our guys. And for the final beat sticks, we run two great Saiyaman. Uh, I kind of detailed him in my previous video, again check it out if you haven't yet, it's the uh, Gohan cards detailed. He's, he's really good um, because he is a very good support warrior with his 5-4, but if he does get injured he becomes a 7-0, which is going to be very important for us in this deck. And of course he has super heal and toughness, and if he uh, battles against uh, a villain, alien or unique warriors, he gets plus one, plus one, and thresh one. So he's really, really good. He's really good. Um, we also got the two uh, future trunks here, the Super Saiyan ones, uh, set three release. He is an absolutely brilliant card. I mean, he could do with a little bit of an upgrade uh, in set five turns, but he's still an excellent card. He's a 7-3-3-1, and my only beef really is with those uh, uh, values when he gets injured. He should, uh, in, in my opinion, he should be a little bit better. Uh, but it, it is what it is. He has super heal, and if he has a Dragon Ball coin on him, you can basically take your planet damage area uh, apart. You can look into uh, six, uh, well, if you have six or more planet damage, which you will probably have, uh, because this deck takes a bit of time for uh, to build up. Uh, then you can look at uh, all the cards in your planet damage, take one out of them and move it to your discard area. There is only like two or three cards maybe in the whole game that allows you to retrieve cards from your planet damage. Don't forget it goes into discard, we don't have old Kai, we can put it back into our deck. So uh, having trunks in, in the game of course you need to have outstanding victory, but that's not going to be an issue with all the super heal abilities and with all the uh, growth coins we're going to have on, on our teams. And finally, we run three copies of the Goku uh, GT Super Saiyan card. He's basically the top of the deck, but as you can see all these guys are uh, turn 6 cost, and there's a very good reason for that. So we have uh, these guys, and what's really cool about... Uh, uh, GT Super Saiyan, which by the way, in my opinion, is probably the best Goku card uh, ever printed. But I'm gonna do a video on the Goku cards anyway. Uh, but he's super good, he's super good, 7150, so very decent injured stats as well, which is fairly important to us. Uh, he's got super heal, and he's got the valid ability, you can discard another Goku warrior from your hand, and you can heal him. And there's another Goku, there's the promo Goku, uh, the Genki Dama Goku, uh, which can also heal himself for two super chi, which is very expensive. Uh, GT Goku is much better because you have the little Gokus. We have three copies of him. You can, we can. He's got the built-in heal ability, and that combined with super heal means a lot of growth coins, and that's what we are looking to generate on all these guys. 
So if you look what's happening here, we have the GT Super Saiyan Goku, we have the uh, uh, Future Trunk Super Saiyan, and we have Great Saiyan Man here. They're all turn 6, they all come down in turn 6, and they all have a very cheap equivalent to come into play, to support them to come into play early. So we have uh, Goku for him, we have Trunks for him, and we have Gohan for him. And that's basically the name of the game. That's what we are trying to do here. Because uh, the most important interaction uh, that we are running here is going to be between our uh, event and our technique cards. So if we look at the event cards, we're running two pain and power. Only two because uh, I'm still kind of testing with the deck, see how it runs. Really, Pain and Power is the best with Gohan. Because what Pain and Power does comes down with a turn limit of time limit of two, so you have to be very careful when you're actually gonna play. It's not gonna stay in play forever. And you can only use it when you're the, the defender. In your strategy in the strategy step when you're a defender, you have to spend a chi and injure a target warrior you control. And then you heal that warrior at the end of uh, your end of the turn and put a growth coin on it. Now, if you do this with a super heal uh, warrior, there is going to be two growth coins, one from pain and power and one from the super heal ability. So, if you do this pain and power for great Saiyan man, he gets injured, so he, we force him to become a 7 0 uh, when we're defending. So, in effect, we actually have a better chance to get. Uh, uh, you know, we get a more powerful team with Great Saiyan, but we do lose the ability for him to be a support warrior for that turn. And don't forget, if we are super desperate, we can always uh, have Boo there uh, because his ability uh, can be used in any action phase. We can discard him so our uh, warriors don't get any damage. So we can always save Great Saiyan if he will get a Kamehameha or anything like that. And this is why I ultimately went with Boo and not Hercule. So we use uh, Great Saiyan Man, uh, Pain and Power with Great Saiyan Man, put Great Saiyan Man to Injured when we're defending. And at the end of the turn, he's going to re-stand and he's going to get two Growth Coins. One for the Pain and Power, one for the Super Heal. So he becomes, in effect, a 7-6 for our turn when we are attacking. Which is pretty amazing, I must say. Pretty amazing. Now you can use Pain and Power anytime you want. You just have to spend the Chi and you have to injure Target Warrior. As long as it's in play, of course. So you're going to have two, uh, maybe three shots, I think. Yeah, because you play with two. Yeah, and you can take it. So you, Pain and Power is going to stay in play for three turns once you play it. You don't have a lot of turns to do this. Uh, and the most important bit here with the deck is obviously ascending to a new level. If you read this card very carefully, first of all, it's amazing because it doesn't have a uh, time limit on it. It doesn't come into play with time counters. Costs you two chi. Uh, turn three, you play it, and any time you can, uh, if in your in any action or strategy phase. Uh, any action or strategy phase could be yours, could be your opponent's. You can reveal a Saiyan Warrior card with a turn cost less than or equal to your turn marker. Move a warrior you control with the same name to your Chi area. In that case, put the revealed warrior into the same team with a growth coin on it and the Dragon Ball coins transfer. In effect, we can cheat into play all these high turn cost warriors. Uh, if we can do something with our turn marker. Uh, and don't forget, because it's in the action phase, uh, this is basically... So even if it's like turn 6 and you have, let's say you have Goku uh, in a team, you can, you can move the little Goku uh, into your Chi if you reveal a uh, GT Super Saiyan Goku and put that Goku into play. He's gonna get a growth coin and if little Goku had any Dragon Ball coins on him, those are going to go onto the GT Super Saiyan Goku as well. So all already, we didn't have to pay the chi cost of Goku because he says uh, uh, put the uh, 
in case put the revealed warrior into the same team with a growth coin uh, you put into play so you're not deploying uh, if you would be deploying you could only do this once a turn and you would have to pay the uh, the chi cost of course but it's put into play so that means you can put goku gt super saiyan into play without paying his chi cost of course your turn marker has to be six but you generate chi because the little goku will go into the chi and especially for trunks because he costs two chi uh, we just save that two chi and we make a one chi for ourselves by moving little trunks into our chi area now how do we then break ascending to a new level you might be thinking well there is one card in uh, specific that we're gonna use to do this and that is cross arm dive now you might have seen my previous Krillin uh, deck profile which I posted quite a few years ago now and I actually misinterpreted cross arm drive back then I was I was uh, looking to use it uh, in the wrong way but now I understand the card and I know what it does Again, in your action phase, you can, any action phase, it could be yours, it could be your opponent's, uh, you can move your turn marker up by two. At the end of the turn, you move it back by two. So what we basically do is we try to get to turn four, surviving till turn four, make sure we have ascending to a new level in play, make sure we have uh, at least one of the matching combinations. Uh, so we need to have a little Gohan, uh, in play and a great Saiyaman in our hand uh, or a Goku and a GT Super Saiyan Goku in our hand little Goku in play or a little Trunks in play with a uh, Super Saiyan uh, turn 6 Trunks in our hand and in effect if we have ascending to a new level in play we can play a cross arm dive in our action phase and we can just drop for free any of these bad boys to replace any of these little guys into play absolutely broken absolutely broken because in effect what we can do is in turn four for free we can drop one of these super effective super heal guys which all do excellent stuff he can goku can heal himself trunks can completely take apart your uh, planet damage zone great saiyaman uh, is an excellent uh, support warrior, e even better attacker if he's combined with pain and power, and he gets the edit buff and the thrash one if he uh, battles uh, alien, uh, unique, or villain. So they're all epic cards, and to put these guys into play two turns earlier is absolutely crazy. Now what happens if you have two cross arm dives in your hand? You can technically, even turn three, when you drop ascending to a new level, you can then drop two cross arm dives and turn three you can already drop one of these guys if you have the little equivalent warriors in play unfortunately you can't do it in in turn two because obviously ascending to a new level you can't play it before turn three cross arm dive only affects uh, does come into effect only in the action step but it's still absolutely broken because we can surprise our opponent so quickly they expect a, uh, a minor defense or a minor attack with a Goku. You can maybe have a Goku and a Gohan set up, uh, maybe a Boo in the background, for example. So you have something like this in play, for example. And then you have ascending to a new level in play. You drop a cross arm dive, you put Goku into Chi, you play uh, GT Super Saiyan Goku and uh, you uh, put Gohan into your Chi and you put Great Saiyan in there. And all this is done in your action phase, obviously, after you have organized your teams. Uh, after, ideally, you play it after your opponent has uh, assigned defenders. So, whereas the team here was, uh, Boo was a 4, Gohan was a 1, so that's a 5, and Goku another 3, that was a team of 8. Now we replace these guys with 7 plus a growth coin, that's 8, great same, and another 4, plus a growth coin, that's 5, so that's already 13, plus we have boost 4, so we got a 17 team, we literally almost doubled uh, our team attack, in fact, we have doubled uh, and added a little bit on it, because we're on 8, so if you look at it, it's completely broken, and it's going to give you an outstanding victory, if there are no defenders, this is two planet damage immediately. If there are defenders, this is an outstanding victory. You're going to kill their lead warrior and damage everybody else behind. So either way, uh, 
pulling this one off is going to completely debilitate your opponent's defenses uh, or you know give you a good advantage with uh, getting two planet damage in. Uh, at least to say of course with trunks you can claw back into the game if for any reason um, you're in a situation where you have a lot of planet damage you just have to ensure you get outstanding victories in which is absolutely not an issue it's very easy to do so especially if you play trunks through ascending to a new level comes down with a growth coin uh, you can also use pain and power on trunks or just the best thing to do is use pain and power on great Saiyaman, of course uh, just ensuring that he's a lead warrior in that in that case if you're defending or anything so you get the added benefit of him uh, becoming injured uh, and the, all, the other cards that I haven't mentioned just yet, because I wanted to show you the, the, base, the, the baseline mechanics, how we break the game yet again. Uh, we got two mystery pots here, just for a little bit of uh, a, uh, a card advantage, obviously. It doesn't last long. We do draw three cards, but we have to put uh, slowly cards back to the top of our deck. But it can be very good. Again, it's a turn four play which is very important because it's turn 4 where we are really looking to explode with this deck. We have to defend to the best of our abilities until turn 4 and hopefully get all the cards into our hand that we need by turn 4 to get all these beat sticks down into play. Uh, we got a couple of uh, techniques here besides the three cross arm dives. We have three Kamehamehas. Ideally, uh, you would, yes, you would want to reconsider running Great Saiyaman and running a Super Gohan, um, the turn 6 uh, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan from set 2 is a good one because it obviously has Super Heal, so you want to ensure that it does have Super Heal if you want to use the Pain and Power edit benefits here. Unfortunately, Great Saiyaman can't use Kamehameha because he doesn't have Hermes style. Uh, he is a Saiyan, but he doesn't have the super symbol. He has the Earth symbol, which is a bit of a shit situation. But we can still use Kamehameha with Goku, with Trunks, with, with most of our guys. Uh, so it's not the end of the world. Especially we want to use it with Goku because that is too damage straight in. And... Um, uh, if we can churn out a Kamehameha at turn 4 after we drop down the GT Super Saiyan Goku, uh, we just taken out one of our opponent's cards. Uh, then, obviously, if we can do an outstanding victory, we literally have completely destroyed two of our opponent's warriors. Uh, because the outstanding victory will give two damage to the lead warrior in the opposing team, and Kamehameha, you, well, you can take out, obviously, one of the uh, supporting warriors. Uh, and then finally, we got two Senzu Beans, just to have a little uh, heal, an additional heal ability here, uh, in case uh, we want to utilize Super Heal if, if our guys do get a damage in some way. If we don't have a Boo in play, for example, and they do get a damage in, uh, then we have the ability to heal them with the uh, Senzu Beans and put another growth coin on them. Of course, because we they have the we have the super heal ability on these guys, so Senzu Beans is going to be very important. So in this deck, we're not looking to uh, make power advantage with the use of the techniques. I was thinking of a design where we use powerful heritage because all our guys are pretty much Saiyans and they would greatly benefit from it. But then I would have had to go down the uh, alien super uh, deck combination. And uh, uh, the only reason why I didn't go down that way is because I wanted to use Great Saiyaman because he's definitely one of the best Gohans out there and he's Earth. Now I could take out Great Saiyaman because all the rest of the uh, Earth cards that we use are actually splashable. If you look at Senzu Beans, it comes down for two generic Chi. If you look at Cross Arm Dive, it comes down for one generic Chi. If you look at uh, Kamehameha, it comes down for a Super or an Earth Chi and two generic Chi. Uh, and we could quite easily uh, replace Mystery Pots with um, well, UFO Landing, for example, which is, in my opinion, a lot better uh, card draw engine. So this is what I was saying uh, about the fact that I wanted to show you guys like the first version. Uh, of the deck where I went with Great Saiyaman because Great Saiyaman is definitely truly in my opinion the best uh, Gohan that you get out there but if you want to make this deck a little bit more efficient if you want to have if you want to give all your guys access to Kamehameha 
you're gonna have to drop the great say man and you're gonna have to use a super gohan and the mystery pots has to come out maybe not you are full landing because you're not really going to have a lot of uh, alien cards the only two alien cards that we have uh, in this point in time is pain and power but we could use a couple of vegetas problem is with vegeta is that there was no official release of any Vegeta cards, which comes down with a turn cost less than three. I think the cheapest Vegeta is the promo Vegeta, which has a turn cost of three. Uh, it does have super heal though, if I remember correctly. So it might be uh, a potential to use that card, but then we would have to take something else out. And I think Trunks really suits this deck really well because we can search for it with, with Goten. And Goku just has the built-in heal ability, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so there's a lot of different avenues that we can build this deck. Uh, and this is like version 1, as I said. Still huge, huge potential in the deck. I I haven't done any playtesting yet. I literally put the deck together. I was, uh, I was driving back home. It was a two-hour car journey. I drive a lot for work. And uh, and it, the deck kind of just came together uh, in the car journey. And so I wanted to build it, share it with you guys. So let me know what your opinion is about this deck. Would you try it out? Luckily, it, does, it, do, it has only like two super rares, which is the uh, uh, Future Trunks, Super Saiyan Future Trunks. Most of the cards are rare. I'm not going to lie. Might not be the easiest cards to, to find, but um, uh, a couple of promo cards here, of course, as well. But um, I was trying to get a deck together where you have versatility of characters. Now, I could make a, a, a Gohan deck where I use uh, alternate future and ensure that I can protect my events that come into play with Zev Warriors gathered and maybe some, some counter spells, maybe using Roar. Um, going down a little bit more the alien line or maybe using unique unique has a, a hidden uh, a summoning hidden power which is a very good heal ability it does damage the warrior back at the end of the turn so that would also combo really well with Gohan so there's, there's a lot of avenues we can go down um, so I'm not quite sure which uh, other Gohan build I'm gonna try next but I wanted to uh, uh, book this share with you guys so let me know what you think like share subscribe comment below um yeah and don't forget to uh live in peace and enjoy dragon ball ccg bus and signing out